Good morning, Dr. Indabia Sandhu. Thank you so much for joining us on The Light Breakfast. Good morning and thank you for having me. Now, Dr. Indabir is an expert in gifted children and today for Growing Pains, we're going to learn about how we as parents can pro- probably tell if we have gifted children and how we, do, we, do we work on them. Now, Dr. Indabir, let's get to the first question. Maybe you can explain what or who are gifted children. Okay, well, uh, I'm trying to make it quite simple. Now, gifted children are children who perform or have the ability or potential to perform at a level significantly beyond their chronological age peers. Chronological is their birth age. Okay, and whose abilities and characteristics require special provisions, basically special education, uh, social and emotional support from the family, the community, and uh, especially in the educational context. Now, this is regardless of their race, their ethnicity, cultural or social economic status. These individuals uh, actually account for about 2 to 5% in any given population. Hmm. So, this is like 2 to 5% is the, the golden... So, there are not a lot of these gifted children in no. any given population. They're born. You can't make them gifted. Really, I was just going to ask yes. you that further along. Like, if you don't have, if you didn't give birth to gifted children, can you groom them to be smart or to be geniuses? You can groom them to be smart, but not gifted. Okay. Now, as parents, how can we detect whether or not our children are gifted children? Well, now this is going to be quite tricky. You can actually recognize if uh, you have a gifted child based on some common traits that uh, gifted children share. Uh, however, do take note that there are no universally accepted traits that you can look for and there's actually no definitive signs uh, to tell whether your child is gifted or not. However, a good number of gifted children share uh, some common characteristics which I'll, I'll, I'll be uh, discussing. And if you have a checklist of this, it's a good place to start. Yeah. So, among the characteristics that actually sets them apart, they are fast and if, uh, efficient learners. Basically, you see that, you know, they're like, you know, sponges, mm. uh, duty sponges, ability to absorb knowledge very quickly. They pick on ideas and skills. These children are also highly focused on areas of interest and because of their interest, they independently seek out to, you know, go into depth. Uh, of uh, their interest areas. Mm. And they are also highly curious. So this is where you have kids who keep asking, like, you know, uh, questions. And the questions are quite advanced. It's not only like why. It's like, you know, why is it like this? And explain further. Mm. And because of that, because they want more and more knowledge, they are avid readers. And uh, there is a tendency for them to read often on their own and frequently uh, they you can see that they prefer reading to physical activities. And because they read a lot, they also have a rich fund of knowledge. You know, they know a lot more about the world than you would expect them to. Sometimes they just surprise you like, hey, where did you get that from? From reading. Mm. They have very, very good memory. You know, you could say excellent memory. They easily recall what they have heard, saw, learned, or even experienced. As young as, you know, when they're infants, they actually can recall those memories. Wow. Uh, yes, amazing. <laughs> very independent, very independent. They require little or uh, almost sometimes no direction or instruction, uh, especially when they start a new activity or, you know, maybe learn a new game or acquire a new skill. They, they enjoy doing it on their own because it challenges them. It's a stimulation that they, they really need. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will see that they have early development of speech, usually an average of um, about two months earlier than the peers. Usually we see by around nine months, they can, you know, uh, say their first words. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought my children were early speakers. They spoke before they turned one, but about 11 months. But No, no not everyone. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. <laughs> not everyone. There are a lot of exceptions, actually. Uh, 
you could, will also see that they are early and advanced. Uh, they've got earlier and advanced development of motor skills, which involve uh, balance uh, or even you know coordination, movement, like cycling and stuff. Anything that involves balance, coordination, and, and movement. Mm -hmm. In fact, in some of the fine motor activities, for example, assembling uh, small objects like you know, for example, Lego. Uh, transforming toys or blocks, putting uh, puzzles together, you will see that they are more advanced. They do it faster, they're, they're quick, and they don't give up easily. Mm. However, uh, other fine motor skills may not be as advanced. You may find that actually a number of gifted children are quite poor in handwriting. Oh! Like, you're like, <laughs> oh, you're so smart. Why can't you write well? Now, this has actually got little to do with their intelligence. It's, uh, it's got more to do uh, it's more related to a lack of attention to detail or impatience with the slow, tedious and, you know, you could say somewhat boring task of handwriting practice rather than problems with fine motor control. So th this is just to let parents know. So some parents keep complaining, oh, you know, her handwriting is so bad, his handwriting is so bad. <laughs> so this may be one of the reasons. You will see that they prefer older companions, uh, usually perhaps someone who's at a similar or higher mental age. Okay. Mental age, uh, chronological age is the age that, you know, is your birth age. Whereas uh, mental age is, uh, they call it the IQ age, your, your real intelligence age. You'll find that they're very creative. They've got vivid imagination, again, because they, don't, they remember things, they're alert, and because of their reading. On emotions, now this is where it gets quite tricky. They can be emotionally very intense uh, with heightened sensitivity. So, you know, and you, you can't tell them, hey, you know, don't be sensitive, stop being sensitive, don't cry. This is what they are like. You know, there are other ways of dealing with it. Um, they may have high levels of energy. Some do, some don't, which is why some of them are mistaken, uh, mistakenly diagnosed as having ADHD. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. They have leadership qualities. You'll see when you have play dates, they, they tend to take charge during, you know, playtime. Uh, sometimes to the extent that other children may uh, see them as being bossy and controlling. And yes, they don't do it deliberately. Okay, that, you know, leadership qualities from a young age. Um, they do enjoy alone time. For example, more solitary activities such as reading. Those who don't read, there are many who don't read. They, they daydream, they observe a lot, or they just be sitting and thinking. Mm. So, you know, if your child is just daydreaming and all, it's actually not bad at all. Um, they are also more appreciative of nature and art forms, for example, painting, sculptures, music. They, they tend to enjoy those. And, you know, when we talk about music, it's usually the more classical kind of music. It, I think it's uh, the frequency suits them, suits what they enjoy, the pitch, as okay. you can see. Uh, but do keep in mind that uh, not every gifted child is going to show all or even most of these characteristics. These mm. are just some more common shared characteristics. Uh, and some will show traits that are actually quite contrary to what you might expect in a gifted child. I mean, okay. you know, for example, Einstein learned to speak quite late and he didn't read till he was seven. Okay. So, you know, there are exceptions to the case. Okay, so if as a parent, if you think that your child uh, may have advanced abilities, you are actually the best judge. So get it checked. And the reason you, you want to... Yeah, how do you get it checked? Like, is there a, a clinic that we can go to to diagnose gifted children? You don't diagnose gifted children uh, directly. You, we actually use uh, IQ scores and uh, the IQ scores have uh, has to be based on a standard intelligence test mm. and, uh, because usually these tests are more objective and systematic and uh, sometimes we do use subjective methods as well to enhance accuracy. As Is there as a place in Malaysia where parents can send just their child for, for, to check whether or not they are gifted? Well, uh, you, can, I, you can go to Mensa, I, I suppose, because they, uh, I think they have their own test or you can actually get you can get privately tested and you can show them the results of the test and um i do that whenever i visit malaysia i've got uh, 
an office in KL. And um, as a, I, I'm with the National Association for Gifted Children. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good platform uh, for parents to get help. Now they have all the resources and they'll probably be able to advise you uh, what best to do. How high must their IQ be to be considered gifted? The magic number. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know, the cutoff point is actually 130 on a standardized test. So if you, you know, you get 150 on online tests that, you know, we, we cannot consider that. It has mm -hmm. to be a standardized test. And uh, usually standardized tests are like the Wexler series, the Stanford Binet, depending in, uh, these are world recognized uh, IQ tests. So you can use it anywhere, really. Okay, so course, we can get the standardized test online as well? Uh, no. 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 You have to get it tested from a psychologist who has experience. Because we even, when I do testing, um, usually in, uh, what I understand is that in a lot of places, they have someone else, maybe uh, someone to do the testing, and then someone else to score and the uh, consultation, the report will be done by the expert. Uh, I don't believe in that. I feel I should do it all because when the child is doing the test, I need to read the behavior. Mm. I need to see what are the gaps. And, you know, I don't go 100% uh, based. That for me, there, there is no black or white answer. Mm. I've got 20 years experience in this, so I can tell, you know, if, if the child may be highly able or, you know, if the child is nervous, anxious, and I will know when to give it a break and get the child to just take a break or, you know, the child needs to be comfortable for mm. me to get the best results uh, from the child. Mm. But at what age, though, do we, do we test the child? Like if, for example, I can tell that my child is gifted by the age of one, can we actually test that child at the age of one when they can't formal, even read or write? Right. Formal testing is very difficult. Uh, I personally believe that a child should be at least six years and above as uh, it is difficult to make, make as accurate IQ determinations at an earlier age. Mm. So usually for younger children, there are alternative subjective measures to determine giftedness. For, uh, for instance, uh, using checklists, consulting a professional, um, doing a, a parent-teacher surveys and interviews, observation, and so on. The problem is uh, in Malaysia, you know, not much of this is done. Mm. It's a very specialized field. There are very uh, few children. And, you know, <laughs> I think in terms of, um, you know, as, as a business, it, you, <laughs> you don't really make money from, from this. So... Yeah. Speaking of money, does it cost a lot to get a an child IQ, tested? Uh, an IQ test privately, yes. Okay. That is why probably not a lot of parents would be encouraged to, even if they sort of feel like their child is gifted, maybe they're discouraged in that sense that it's really expensive uh -huh. to get it tested. Uh, I think more than that, I think parents are quite willing to spend on their kids. More than that, it's they're not aware. They mm. don't know where to go. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I think it's more like that because uh, a, a lot of parents I meet, I meet, you know, tell me that, you know, oh, we didn't know there was such a thing, you know, like, you know, I, I never knew this and like, and seriously, in Malaysia, there's little help. Yeah. But what are the effects of, of really not recognizing a gifted child or not um, encouraging that growth in a gifted child? Well, if you don't encourage the growth, I mean, there actually can be, it can go two ways. Um, one is that, you see, giftedness is inborn. Mm. You can make a child a high achiever, you know, to get straight A's, uh, but you cannot make a child gifted. Mm. Genetics is run in a family or it may skip a generation. So once gifted, it's for life. Uh, it doesn't mean that if, the child is not gifted, the child is not good. In fact, you know, there are many uh, high achievers who are doing much better than a child who is diagnosed as gifted, you know, mm. especially if not recognized. So now, if it, they're not recognized um, and challenged, it can go two ways. First, let's look at the positive. Now, some of these children are self-motivated. They have 
intrinsic motivation. They are independent. Now, you know, I don't know if this is a good example, but if you watch The Simpsons, you know, Lisa Simpson? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, she is an example of a gifted a child, mm. you know, of course it's just a cartoon, but you know, I, I think it's a very good example. She's always looking for ways to challenge herself. Now, there are gifted children like that who don't, who are not recognized, who don't get help from family, but you know, they can be quite successful. There are not very many of them though. Mm. You see, academically, they may do well if, uh, even if the parents don't recognize their gift, but you know, they have good upbringing. Uh, parents make sure they're doing their work, but um you know, emotionally, there may be issues later in life. Mm. Now, next, the intelligent remains but isn't developed to full potential, making them uh, possibly perform far beneath their potential because they did not have the appropriate support mm. while growing up. Yeah. Now, they may become intellectually uh, bored and they may respond in different ways. In the worst case scenario, uh, they may begin to develop something we call uh, lazy brain syndrome. Mm. Now, yeah, these are actually chronic underachievers. They could also go on the other extreme. You see, with their advanced abilities, they could end up in unhealthy or criminal activities, which may be seen as more challenging. Mm. You, you can find quite a few of them in prison for fraud, and you know, <laughs> yeah. So they are also probably not able to understand why they are different from others. You know, gifted children, they actually know that they are different when they're very young, mm. whether it's, um, it's uh, I, mean, I mean, parents help them understand that, that's a different matter altogether. But they actually do realize they just are not capable of understanding why, why am I like this? Uh, and you see, that could lead to psychological disorders, uh, depression, anxiety, a destructive mindset. So these are the negatives. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's why the beer. If you don't mind me asking, like, I don't know whether you remember the movie Rain Man and then recently yeah. there's this movie called The Good Doctor and everything. Some of these gifted children are like savants, aren't they? No. <laughs> no? Because some of these are like brilliant minded but then they don't yeah. function very well in society. Would you call those gifted children as well? You want to you want to check whether they are on the spectrum. Yeah. Okay. Or the autis- you- autistic, autism spectrum. Okay, Some uh, of these gi- gifted children are on the autism spectrum. Very true. And, you know, some of them may have ADHD as well. Now, um, you see, the term gifted, ADHD, autism, they're very different. They've got, you know, they're just totally different terms as any terms may be. Now, giftedness is an ability context. Whereas uh, autism and ADHD, they are neurodevelopmental disorders. Mm. Now, there are children who are gifted at the same time diagnosed with ADHD or, you know, uh, within the uh, autism spectrum disorder. Basically, uh, this is with reference to gifted children who have challenges that affect their right, learning. Okay. They're gifted, but they are challenges, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. They could have ADHD, maybe dyslexia, autism, or sensory processing issues, any learning disability or developmental disorder. But they are gifted as well. You know, you, you test them and, you know, you find that they are gifted. Now, we call them twice exceptional. That's the term for it. This is a universal term. 2E, twice ex- exceptional, which indicates children who fit in both the categories, which means that they have exceptional ability and at the same time disability. So they are gifted in some ways, but they also face learning or developmental challenges. Now, these children are considered twice exceptional because of their intellectual gifts and because of their special needs. As a group, they are often neglected. In fact, they are the most neglected group in school or even at home because teachers and parents tend to overlook the child's abilities and focus solely on their weaknesses. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, but that's not what we see sometimes in autistic children who are very focused on just one sort of yes, um, yes, one yes. thing or, or, or one interest that makes them a genius or, or really good at that one if, item that they're focused on, right? If their challenge, if they are in the spectrum, we call that savan. Mm. We don't use the term gifted for them because uh, it's just one area. Mm. 
uh, and and they have a lot of challenges in every other area. Yeah. Yeah. So no, a, a gift a gifted child doesn't really necessarily mean that there are they are like really intelligent or geniuses when it comes to just study wise, right? How yes. else can they be considered a gifted child? Okay, so studying is, uh, you know, the high achievers, for example. You no, know, the high achievers may or may not be uh, gifted. Okay, there are many high achievers who are not gifted and, uh, you know, it is very possible. Now, that is the academic domain. That is just one part of giftedness, that, mm. uh, one type of giftedness. Now, they could also be gifted in other domains, for example, general intellectual ability. Now, this is something you can, you know, you actually see on IQ test, for example, they perform averagely uh, for school tests, but on, on an IQ test, you see that, hey, you know, you are in the gifted range. Yeah. Uh, creativity, uh, visual or performing arts, and uh, leadership. Mm -hmm. So these are the other areas that, uh, that we look into. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a friend whose son, mm -hmm. at the age of, I think, three or four, could name all the various different makes and brands of cars just by looking at them go by. Would that right. be considered a gift as well? That is a gift. You know, it's possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible, especially if they are not, um, like, you know, forced to learn. Or mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you see, I, I have personally, I have clients who actually, you know, persuade their child to memorize memorize mm -hmm. this and that and that is memory you can memorize but the important thing is how much do you understand mm -hmm. so gifted children they don't just memorize memorize is road learning it's, it's for them they don't enjoy drills now if yes uh, i mean someone who can remember every car that passes by or you know every capital of countries they have very good memory mm -hmm. but how long I mean, how much is that going to be helpful? Mm. So if they really, they're really interested in the capital of the countries and they're interested in the countries, then it's different. I think I'm sure you've seen a lot of YouTube videos where parents, yeah. you know, I think, you know, you, you just, I mean, I'm sure parents feel a little glorified when you see your kid like that. Yeah. But if you ask me, I would not say a child like that is gifted. Okay. Uh, the child can be possibly gifted. But we have to look at a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. As being able to memorize, I think uh, practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the more you, you, know, you learn. Just like if you work really hard, you study, you can do really well in exams. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what should we as parents do to sort of encourage the growth of our child if we think our child is somehow gifted? Well, okay. What can we do? Right. If your child exhibits a strong interest or talent, provide them opportunities to develop them. If they're interested in something, even if you're not interested in it, or that is not your dream for them, you know, they will have their own dreams. And if they're passionate about something, they're really passionate about something, allow them to do it. Mm. You know, like, for example, let's say a, a male child who's interested in cooking. And like the parent, no, 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 you, you know, amazing what they can turn out to be mm. um, expose them to diverse experiences as much as possible uh, make sure they are challenged this is important challenge they're doing tasks that are meaningful and uh, they have a variety of activities to indulge in because the moment they are not challenged boredom will kick in and you know as they say an idle mind is a devil's workshop so you know you, you gotta do that and uh, another very important thing is to support their emotional need. Apart from, you know, parents usually focus too much on uh, children's intellectual needs, especially for gifted children. Their emotional needs are so crucial. You may not realize that when they're very young, but once they, you know, get into teenage years or, you know, go to college and later on as adults, they may have some problems. So, mm. you know, help them when they're young and help them develop a growth mindset by uh, praising effort, not ability. Don't tell them that, oh, you know, I mean, praise their effort, not what they are, or don't label them, do not label gifted children. Oh, so uh, we cannot call them like, oh, you're so clever, you're so intelligent. 
we can say, you know, so I, I know as parents, I say that sometimes, you know, especially when the kid is young, they like to hear that. But uh, I think you, you don't say, oh, you're gifted, you're so intelligent. You say, oh, well done, very good. You know, something like that yeah. would sound better for the child. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and another thing about gifted children is that quite a number of them are perfectionists. So you, you need to encourage them to take intellectual risk and be open to failures. You know, so it, it will help them learn. And this is very important for the future, more for the future than uh, uh, currently. Mm. And work with teachers to meet your child's need. You need them to support you. Uh, and please don't blame teachers. Most of their training does not equip them to handle gifted children. So, you know, it's not their fault for not being able to understand. Maybe you, if you can help them, you help them. And uh, of course, you know, you can have your child's abilities tested to, you know, uh, look for gaps in learning and, you know, help them in their strong areas and uh, uh, and close the gap in weaker areas as well. It seems like parents play a bigger role than teachers if you have gifted children. Well, uh, Can teachers help in any way? Um, quite unlikely unless there is awareness or better still some uh, some kind of formal training. Mm. You see, just like having special provision for uh, children with learning disabilities in school, gifted children, they require differentiation in uh, their curriculum as well. Mm. Special education teachers are trained. As far as I'm aware, I think there's almost, uh, there's minimal training for teachers in gifted education in Malaysia, except uh, especially for the younger group. I know for the older group, some teachers... Uh, uh, like Maktab uh, Mara Mara teachers, I've trained them, so I know. So uh, they have some kind of training, so and they do have some background about you know the creed. Whereas for the younger group, which is the group that really needs uh, help, you know, if uh, because the younger they are, the better for them to identify them. So if the teacher has some training or even awareness, uh, they will be able to pick on some clues about the child being gifted. Now, teachers with a lack of awareness may only be supportive of gifted children who are achieving. Mm. Now, um, I can, I, I'll just give you an example. Um, you can just imagine this child, this uh, gifted child at preschool level. Okay, let's call him um, Ron. Now, Ron has mastered his alphabet at two years of age and uh, recognized many words at three and is able to do simple reading by four. At three school teachers are just starting off with alphabets and simple words. Now, Ron is neither stimulated nor challenged. He's not able to focus. Lessons are boring because of the repetition and he is in dire need of some stimulation. So what he does, he pokes his friend, he throws a pencil, uh, he daydreams, he leaves his seat and you know, something or other almost every day because he needs to stimulate himself and he doesn't know better at, you know, at five years old, what, how much, five, six years old, how, how much can a child, what can a child do? Yeah. Now the teacher gets annoyed and labels him as being disruptive. Words get around. Other teachers label him as well. Like, hey, this is a disruptive child. He will not be given opportunities so he can put his hands up, but he will not be picked. He, he will probably be punished often and he will think that, what did I do wrong? Because he would not be able to understand. Now, unless someone comes to his rescue, this will continue. Now, imagine if the teacher has some training. It would be a totally different scenario. Yeah. So, the so is it difficult to train children, uh, to train teachers? Is it difficult to train teachers uh, really for so. gifted children? I don't think so. I think, you know, <laughs> if it can come from the government level, it would be excellent. Mm. The only problem is the numbers are so small. I think um, a lot of uh, people at the top feel that, you know, you know, you don't need, they are, so, they are good on their own, they can flourish on their own, mm. which is, it is really sad. I mean, you know, it's, it's very sad actually. Yeah. I, I hope that Malaysia will, you know, do something about it. I'm happy to train. <laughs> But can parents of gifted children take up this course as well? This this teaching for gifted children course? Yes. 
Yes, I mean, I think what I think would be ideal is in every teacher training college, the teachers, there should be a compulsory course for them to... Um, uh, Assess gifted children, yeah. yeah. But actually... Credit course, be aware. I actually, I, I was teaching uh, at UPM before I, I got married and left Singapore. So uh, I actually came up with a um, you know, proposal and it was approved. But unfortunately, I left and it wasn't continued. Mm. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe I should have stayed on. <laughs> maybe you should come back, Dr. Indivir, <laughs> and, and oh, start this course <laughs> yeah, I would after this whole CMCO <laughs> thing is over. <laughs> Now let's talk about you. Like, what made you so passionate about gifted kids in the first place? Okay, this, this may sound a bit showy, but you see, I'm actually um, I'm dyslexic as well. I, I read late. I spoke very early, but uh, I took many years. To, I mean, I, I took longer to read. My siblings were reading at like you know two, three years old. They were reading. That was a teacher. My parents. Parents are teachers, so um, you know that made sure he taught us how to read. Uh, my siblings are all. I've got two brothers and a sister, and they're all medical doctors. Um, all Chinese educated. Mm. Yes, all Chinese educated. I went to four different schools. Oops, <laughs> I got kicked out everywhere. <laughs> I was very disruptive. I was troublesome, and um, you know, finally, that put me in a. I I was I. My kindergarten was from a Chinese school, and um, unfortunately, it didn't last. I, I think Chinese school, they're very strict. I remember my brother getting the cane, and you know, uh, and it was very difficult. He was the first non-Chinese uh, to be in a Chinese school. This is in Kluang. I come from a very small town, Kluang, Johor. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, that put me uh, at a school where his friend was the principal, and it was, um, was a kampong school. I can tell you the name of the school is Sekolah Kebangsaan Kampung Melayu, Keluar. And I was the only uh, non-Malay in the whole school. <laughs> so that, I don't know what was that thinking. An experiment put her in the Malay school, put the rest in Chinese school. So obviously, you know, I could say my math, <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't very good in math because it wasn't as advanced as my siblings. And they went into the science stream and I had to opt for humanities. And um, I wanted to do law. Uh, I, I did very well for my STPM. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think, you know, there's a quota system and uh, I, I didn't get into that. So I was actually offered a scholarship to do uh, Malay language. You're going to be surprised at this. Yes. <laughs> 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 and my parents, we, we're not very wealthy. So um, that said, that, you know, you, there's a scholarship. So might as well take it and, you know, do. So I did. I, I did the Malay course. So my Malay is actually very powerful. Wow. <laughs> I'm showing off, I'm showing off here. <laughs> yeah, so, so you are a gifted a kid yourself. Yeah. No, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't. I, I believe I am, but um, I didn't know until I completed this course and, you know, a lot of things happened. I, I don't think I should mention it <laughs> on national radio. So, <laughs> Uh, things I was not very happy about at the university. I was in UPM. Yeah. And um, then I just, you know, went to the library one day and just looking here and looking. I, I don't enjoy reading a lot, but I read because I want information. You know, so I don't really read magazines and all. I read because I, I'm looking for information. So you see that that's a, not every uh, child who's advanced may enjoy reading. Mm. So what happened is that I came across this book, Handbook of uh, giftedness and I just started reading and reading and reading and it was I was so glued to that book I still remember it's such a thick book but it was just what the what is this awareness of this word at all and the more I read the more I felt happy that you know it answered some questions that I have always been wondering and I decided this this is something I want to do but you know, there there was hardly any material like in Malaysia. There was hardly anything on giftedness. So then, of course, then I applied to go abroad, and um, yeah, so that was the start. And it was there my supervisor in uh, Cambridge. She was the one who realized that um, I've got I'm dyslexic. 
And so she actually diagnosed me. <laughs> oh, at, at a much older age, you were diagnosed to be dyslexia. 26, 26. So I'm clumsy and, you know, I, I, I can't throw a ball at me. I always wonder why am I not good at net games? I, I used to be an athlete. That was the only thing I could do. I love sports. But I can't play ball games because I just can't hop. You see, there's a issue there. I, 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 I don't like driving. I got into many accidents. <laughs> so, I'm very clumsy. Any given day of time, there's a blue black mark on my, <laughs> my body. I knock everywhere. <laughs> you get used to it. So then I felt that you know there are a lot of people out there who actually need this, who need to know because it answers a lot of questions. It, it makes you. It really, it basically, it just tells you that there is nothing wrong with you. Mm. You have, there is something you have. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's nothing to be proud if you are gifted or average or anything. You are what you are. And I think, you know, as parents, whether your child is gifted or not, you should just bring out the best in them. I believe that a happy child will do well in life. Mm. And um, I can tell you, I had the best childhood ever. I, I love my childhood. And I feel very sorry for a lot of children today who don't have that. Mm. So, you know, having a happy childhood is something you're going to remember for the rest of your life. So make sure your children have that because this time it's not going to come back again. Yeah. Yeah, but if you are a parent of a gifted child, I feel like you are pressured to also bring that out from your child and, and in the end, not, they're not happy because you are pressuring them onto studying or getting, uh, playing the piano or playing the violin. You're pressuring them every day because you want the best for them. Yes, you see, the thing is that sometimes you think you want the best for them, but maybe that is not what they want. There are ways and methods how to encourage them. You know, children usually, you know, as children, you, parents want them to do anything that requires hard work and not as challenging. But you can persuade them to do it. And if, you know, for six months, they're doing the same thing. Let's say they're playing the violin and they're always grumbling and playing. Then leave it. Mm. You know, don't force them just because, oh, I think you have an ability. I mean, you can tell within a few months, you can tell if your child is really interested. And if you force your child to do something they're not very interested, um, I, that it can be quite disastrous. I'm not saying don't, you know, don't encourage them to do this or that. You should actually uh, explore what's there and get them into activities, you know, this and that, to just see where their interest actually lies. Mm. And the younger they are, the better. The older they are, it's going to be really hard to get them to do things. But um, controlling is something else. Forcing them to do because, because of your glory. You know, a lot of parents... Um, I know some parents who actually glorify uh, when the kid, they test well for an IQ test, like, you know, 130 and above. Oh, my child is gifted. And <laughs> you don't glorify that. You know, parents who have children who are truly gifted, uh, I've heard how they, you know, how they talk about it. It's difficult. Some of them are you know, at the verge of tears. How do I help my child? Mm -hmm. And yes, it, it's, it's not going to be easy. It's not an easy ride. But of course, the fruits of your labor is going to be beautiful. Because you see, being gifted, emotionally very intense, so the balance is not going to be easy. You need help there. Yeah. So would you say that if you find out your child is gifted, it's better to take care of their emotions than to, than to um, no. make them pursue their intelligence? No. No, not, not really. I think you, you should have a balance. You should have a balance there. You know, you should, if you are not helping them pursue their intelligence, then you're actually holding, holding them back. So, but you need to, you know, you need to look for activities that actually interest them. Mm. What is interesting for them? Yeah. But what if, let's say, this child can play the piano so well by the age of three, right? Mm -hmm. So you keep getting him to play the piano, play the piano, and by the age of six, he's like, I don't want to play anymore. I'm bored of it. But yeah. you know he is gifted with playing the piano. So what do you do then? 
you know, a gifted child, uh, firstly, if by three, the child is able to play piano really well, <laughs> I don't believe the child did it on his own. <laughs> so uh, There is a video going around, I think, of this, this three-year-old boy who can play really well on the piano. I think he's from China, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, we, you know, it's, um, it's quite questionable how the parents kind of, you know, especially from China. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Like, there are a lot of very talented children that comes from China, but this is probably because... For how long? Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you see the real entrepreneurs in China, the ones, you know, like Jack Ma and all, they were not forced. Those are the truly gifted people, mm. you know, and that is how they will turn out to be. Mm. Whereas those, um, the many children who have their videos going on YouTube and this uh, say... 20, 30 years ago, and uh, I mean, okay, that's too long actually. Well, some time back, uh, maybe it's too early to say, but I doubt they will, you know, excel, they will go that far. Mm. Because it's a danger, I mean, like, I have friends who have kids and, uh, and I don't have kids, but then one thing that I always notice is that every parent, every new parent, calls their child oh i have a my son's a genius and, and then after that they start pressuring their kids and everyone's going like uh he can play music so well with the harmonica but all he's doing is actually breathing in and out of the harmonica <laughs> that's not really gifted you know yeah, but know. they all seem to think that it is and then they start pressuring the kid you see the thing is that um parents are like that you know for us our kids are like you know the most actually our kids are gifts for us so you know you think that they are the best and they are this and they are that it's just it is just what parenting is like, but I think parents who have truly gifted children, they don't even talk about their children. They are very quiet, they're very private about their child. Uh, and these are parents who know the repercussions and know what can happen to their child. Um, well, you know, children who, who may have been highly pressured and who, like, who went to uni quite early, like 16, 17, they already in uni and you know in, uh, in a few years time they're doing their PhDs in the, in the 20s they get their PhDs so um, there are some of them I think there are some cases in Malaysia where uh, they took their own lives and you know it's, um, it's a very thin balance there so what is very important is to balance their intellectual and emotional maturity and uh, I think the best thing parents can do is to give support. But I know these days, especially uh, today's parents, the young parents, uh, they, they do anything and everything to have a child who is uh, doing very well. And why wouldn't we? You know, we all want our children to do well because when they do well, they have better opportunities in life. And why wouldn't we want that? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they need to realize that seeing their child to do well, you know, Forcing is just something uh, we should not be doing, especially for gifted children. It will backfire. They will burn out. Mm. So I, I think that, that is quite dangerous. Okay, yeah. so we cannot force it on our children, even yeah. though they are gifted. Yeah. I did write a book actually, um, published last year, The Secrets to Raising a Smarter Child. And yeah. um, uh, this is not for gifted children. This is for any child. It's a parenting book. And what I focus a lot in every activity is uh, for the child to bond with the parents and to, you know, be challenged and be happy. For me, being happy is, is so crucial. Yeah. I actually teach uh, positive psychology. So, <laughs> so I, I've learned, I've uh, learned about, you know, happiness and I find that it works very well. It, it, it has even, even helped me. So I think this is something that has to be encouraged when the child is young. So the child has the tools to, you know, fight stress as uh, they get older. So if our children are not naturally gifted, how can we then raise them to be high achievers or to be smarter? I think, you know, stimulate. Any, any child would require stimulation to do better. Okay. And, you know... Uh, when you talk about stimulation, you mean like if they have an interest in dinosaurs, for example, like my three-year-old, he has an interest in dinosaurs, means I'll buy more dinosaur books for yes. him, more dinosaur toys, that kind of stimulation? Something like that. But, you know, 
it's, it probably would not last very long. Yeah. They will yeah. go on to different things. And that is perfectly fine because what they had learned when they're young is going to stay. So the thing is actually to expose them to as much as possible. I mean, you know, if you, uh, okay, times are bad now, but if you can afford it, you know, when you can travel, travel, show them around. These are memories that, you know, you, you, cannot, you cannot study. You cannot study for this. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, in, in Singapore, I mean, uh, the system of education is quite different here. Mm. Now, yes, they do pick up, they are gifted children. And, uh, but what I feel is that not many children are actually enjoying their childhood. Parents are highly stressed. The te teachers are highly stressed. The principals are stressed. So, and who's suffering? Poor kids. <laughs> I mean, you know, they sometimes I see some of them. They, they just study all the time. <laughs> my friends kids are studying all the time, and when I look at my kids, they're, oh no, <laughs> what's going to happen to you guys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the pressure in Singapore for for children, for school going children, is really high. I think. Yes, but the ones who actually do well in life, uh, you know, not the. I, I mean, I'm just talking about Singapore, of course, you know, if you do really well in Singapore, you get into civil service, which pays really well, and you climb the ladder, and you, but you don't know what's happening on the ground, you, you, you study smart, and for me, a gifted child cannot be study smart, look at all the entrepreneurs, and you know, people who come up with all these wonderful ideas, they not study smart, and usually, you know, they, it's not that they don't do well, I think they do well enough in school, but they don't need to be the top because they spend time in other activities as well. Mm. So if you ask me, being the top student is not everything. But if your child enjoys studying, then yes, why not? If your child is self-motivated and, you know, some children are competitive and they want to do really well, yes. Then sometimes you need to break them from that routine and get them to do something else. Yeah. The other thing about gifted children is, you know, um, get them to exercise. Uh, there are a number of gifted children, the ones who don't have high energy levels, they tend to, you know, just spend time in solitary activities and they're sitting and reading. And uh, exercise is important because it actually helps you, you know, use your energy so you sleep better. And eventually when you grow up, it's actually a stress buster. I, I think that is something they need to learn when they're young. Usually parents of uh, children who are doing very well uh, are not encouraged to go out and play or like, oh, Yo, you're studying? Or, okay, oh, good, just carry on studying. But um, I think exercising is very crucial, very, very crucial. Cut down on gadget time. I know it's very difficult. I'm not saying, you know, totally cut down. You know, they need that as well because everyone else is doing it. You know, they, they don't, you don't want them to be left out. And some, actually some um, activities, uh, some apps are actually quite interesting. Uh, there's this called Piano Tiles. You know, it's actually it's so good for the... It's so Coordination, good. right? Yeah. <laughs> you see something like that, it's actually good. It's just that don't get them addicted. Mm. Uh, Belle, you, you've got a three-year-old, right? Mm -hmm. So be careful that, you know, at that age, they can really, like, you know, you're like, oh, I use it as the pacifier. Don't disturb mommy. Take this. <laughs> you can do that sometimes, but, yeah. you know, uh, don't let it go overboard. A lot of parents yeah. allow it to go overboard. Especially during this whole MCO lockdown period. I It's like, oh, it, yeah. like screen time is out of the window. Screen time limit yes. is like out of the window. And he's yeah. been on it for quite quite a while, in a, uh, quite some time on in a day. So once oh, he gets I, back to yeah. school, I'll try to start yeah. again. <laughs> so that's the thing. At, at this time, you know, things are different. What you can do is you can actually tell them, look, it's because of the MCO, you are allowed to, you know, yes. uh, watch a That's what more. I tell him. Yeah. 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 Mm. So let them know that this is not the norm and it's not going to happen all the time. <laughs> and once you go back to school, we have to go back to what uh, things were like. Yeah. yeah. Now, Dr. Indabia, any last words or any advice to parents who think that they might have gifted children? What advice would you give them? Well, uh, actually, identifying uh, giftedness can be very tricky, for, especially for parents. Basically, your insight, your, your instincts, uh, along with those of your child's uh, educators, teachers, 
they can often be the most important pieces uh, and needed to truly understand your child's unique gifts and potential. Now, if you feel that your child may be gifted and uh, require some help, I would suggest do a lot of reading first. If that's really helpful. Read a lot on the subject. Nothing else to gain awareness. Um, you can see an expert, a professional. In Malaysia, I would suggest that, you know, if you think your child is gifted, please join the National Association for Gifted Children. Um, because uh, you can actually meet other parents who have similar issues and there's a lot of sharing amongst parents, so, which is a good thing. Mm. Now, most importantly, to determine how best to help your child develop their maximum potentially, you need to make sure you have a happy child. A happy child learns much better. Now, regardless of whether your child is gifted or not, every child deserves educational opportunities that could challenge them to the next level. And that is exactly the phase you should be uh, going on. Mm. 